Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at our hinge and how do we lay out the holes for the hinge and then start to get it attached to our toolbox. So I put this up next to a long square so you can take a look at the length. I don't know if you can see the measurement, but it is 13 inches and one quarter. So what we're looking for is three holes on the bottom and three holes on the top. I want each of these holes on the end to be an inch in and I want the one in the middle to be centered. So looking at our size of 13 and a quarter, I wanted to break it down for you. How would I divide that by two? If I were gonna do that in my head. So 13 and one quarter, okay? So if I were to break this down, the first thing I would do is try and find the closest even number to this that's underneath. So I would find 12 inches, because I know I can take 12 inches and I can divide that by two, and that's gonna give me six. So I know that half of 12 is six. Now, to get from 12 to 13 though, I'm still missing an inch and a quarter. So with my remaining inch and a quarter, I would drop off the quarter inch and I would just work with the hole right now. So one divided by two is one half. Okay, so now I know that six is going to get me halfway for 12. I know that a half inch is halfway for one. The only thing that I'm missing now is that quarter inch. So for taking halves of fractions, it's the same thing as multiplying by one over two. So our fractional system works really well because if I take one fourth times one half, I get one eighth. So I'm basically just going to be doubling the denominator. So now I have six plus one half plus one eighth. This was half of 12, half of one, and half of that quarter. So I've broken that number down. And if I wanted to add these together, I'm gonna to struggle to add a half and an eighth unless I have the same denominator. So a half inch, can be also stated as four eighths. So we, we know how to reduce four eighths down to a half. Well, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. I need four eighths so that I can add it with one eighth. If I were to add these two together, I get five eighths. Up here, I have my whole number, six, and my five-eighths. My final answer is six and five-eighths. So a lot of little mental breakdowns to take that 13 and a quarter and figure out in your head, how could you break this apart and find out half of that, six and five-eighths. So on our uh, hinge here, I'm going to use my square. You guys can use a ruler for this. I'm going to measure in one inch. And from one inch, I'm going to come up and I'm just going to mark a dot that is halfway between the edge and that hinge uh, center right there. Next, I need to go two, three, four, five, six inches and one, two, three, four, five eighths. And I'm gonna put a dot in the middle of this piece of metal here. On the far side, I wanna line up with a whole inch. From that whole inch, I'm gonna come down one and I'm gonna put a mark. Flipping this around, I would do the exact same thing on the other side. One inch with a mark in the middle six and five eighths with a mark in the middle. Line this up with a one 
and come down an inch. Okay. I also want to get some labels, kind of like we did with the ends before. I want to label this a T and this a B. Top and bottom. If you want to write top and you want to write bottom, go for it. And then I want to flip this over and I want to label the same thing on the opposite side. Top lines up with the top on here and bottom. As we kind of talked about, it's really hard to make sure, even though we did all these measurements, when you go to hole punch this, it's really hard to make sure that these three holes are exactly the same position as these three. So we want to make sure that we're keeping track of the bottom and the top piece. So I'm going to set this to the side. You would go and hole punch all of these. Um, it's going to take some aggressive hole punching because the metal is a little thicker. I've already gone ahead and hole punched a hinge. I have a T and a B. So the B is the bottom. Looking at our bottom here, just my camera. Uh, we have the hem, which is going to be in the front of our toolbox. So we're going to be attaching to the other side that says the back here. We're going to take our hinge and I'm going to take that bump of a hinge and set it on top of the back here. Okay. Just this. So from the side view, you can see, let's bring it in here, that I have that bottom lined up with the back here, and then I'm bringing that hinge down so it sits on top of that end. So once you have this in place, you bring it flat, you bring it down, Next thing you want to do is you want to center it. Now, all of our boxes are just slightly tweaks different width. So I'm going to have you guys, you're not going to measure this one. You're going to look on this side and compare the gap here with the gap here. So obviously, if I were to put it like this, this gap way too small compared to this gap, right? You want to get these to be about the same. That looks pretty good. Making sure that our hinge is sitting on top of that back. It's not crooked like this. Sitting down nice and tight. You're going to mark all three holes quickly without allowing this to move. I can't mark one and then accidentally move it. So taking my Sharpie or my pencil, I'm going to trace that circle, I'm going to trace that circle, and then come over to this one. Oh, sorry. Trace that circle. Make sure that this hasn't moved and that you can see all three dots in there. Pulling this away. There's my three dots. I know that it lines up with the bottom of my hinge because I use the B to mark that. So you're going to take this over to the hole punch and you are going to hole punch down again. You're going to hole punch each of these that you just marked. Coming in here, I'm going to lift the handle. I'm going to line this up. Get that nice and centered. And hole punch. Far side. Nice and centered. Hole punch. And then my last one. So now I have three holes in the back. 
I'm going to grab my hinge. I know that this side is the B. It's going to the bottom. It's going on the inside of the toolbox. It's going to set down. And if I look here, each of those holes should line up nicely. All right. So now we're going to take our one, two, three rivets from Mr. Bowen. We're going to keep track of all those rivets. I'm going to set them next to the anvil here. I'm going to put a rivet through on the inside and I'm going to hold on to this. So I'm holding that rivet head on the inside. And I'm going to have to go to a different anvil here. You're going to put your toolbox, put the anvil inside of the toolbox here. I'll turn that other one so that it fits. You want to make sure the head of that rivet is sitting on top of the anvil. And then just like we did with the ends, Slowly work your way around with the ball peen end of that hammer. Make yourself a nice head and then you can line up your other two and rivet those in place. Alrighty, so we have line up, we have hole punching, we have labeling and then we have riveting to get our hinge attached to the bottom. Alrighty, good job everyone.